Welcome back to the Quest for Financial Freedom. I'm your host, Steve Savant, and of course with me, my guests on the Quest, Sue Kelly, and of course, Brandy Wessel from the MS chapter here in Arizona. We've been talking about it all week. We want to be able to close out our show for this week and the segment of the day, speaking a little bit more about what's happening in Arizona with people from, with MS and see if you can benefit by participating with us and becoming our partners. Again, you'll want to attend the Women Against MS Luncheon that's going to be held at the wonderful, beautiful Arizona Biltmore Resort and Spa. It's going to be Thursday, April 28th. I already know we got about four or 500 people coming. We'd love to have you come and partner with us. We've seen some of our big corporate sponsors, GoDaddy, Discount Tires, and other people that have really come alongside to partner with us in this challenge. And after doing this whole show this week, I just want to be able to say to all of us, I really appreciate an organization like our local Arizona chapter that has such a menu of value added services to help support people with MS. And not only that, but when you were saying earlier in the week, we were talking about this very thing, Brandy. We always talk about this phrase, 8,000 MS clients in Arizona, but it's really 20 4,000 because we have to include family members and people that are really affected. We think it's indirectly affected, but actually, Sue, it's really, it impacts a family absolutely direct. Absolutely. MS didn't just happen to me. It happened to my whole family and it affected each of us differently. When you think about your children, do you ever think about now I, I have this, will they have this? Sure. I think I think moms worry no matter what. The the chances of either of our, my daughters having MS are a little bit greater than normal population, but not not enough for me to worry. And do you see in families? I'm wondering just because you you're, the society deals with it so much. Do you see families that have this? in their family, I mean, generation, second generation, third generation, have you seen that kind of? Not you know? commonly, but you do you do see it in families where somebody will say, oh, my aunt has it, or mm -hmm. my cousin has it. You know, maybe their dad has it, or their mm -hmm. mom, or their sister. Um, but there are those families where it, mm -hmm. it seems to run. But in my family, I was the first. When we talk about the word scoliosis, you were saying it's a, it's a scarring. Where is this scarring? Where, where, when physicians are looking for this, where is this most pronounced? Um, in the spinal cord and in the brain. Mm -hmm. So that's why the MRI is so it, so it's so important. And if people started having symptoms, what symptoms would they look like? And that would cause you to recommend, oh, you need to see a physician. Because MS affects the central nervous system, any place the central nervous system touches, which is pretty much your whole body, um, that's where you can see symptoms. So you could have visual problems, you could have numbness, you could have tingling, um, you could have mobility issues. Any of those things would put up a red flag for me, hmm, go see your doctor. When you see people, new people coming in and experiencing the shock for the first time, you have counselors, you have people like Sue, at the ready to help them walk through this first this first contact issue. Yeah, and I wouldn't necessarily call them counselors, but really people in the community who are going through the same thing mm -hmm. they're going through, and um, we really bring them together so they can share and um, you know just just share about what mm -hmm. they're going through and and how they're going to move forward. You were talking about in the first part of our segment here. You were talking about no boys allowed night, and that's a night where gals can get together and walk through all the challenges they have with MS. And then the guys have theirs. How important is it, do you think, from a strictly you observing now, all these clients, I mean, you have 8,000 clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you got a little pattern going. Mm -hmm. How important is it to kind of sometimes separate the genders so that you can really talk out things that you normally would maybe feel freedom to do so? It's it's been incredible, I'm going to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. when I first started with the organization almost six years ago, um, I would definitely notice in those groups that we had everyone together, there wasn't a, as much talking. There wasn't mm -hmm. as much sharing. It was very much that basic program. You know, people kind of got up and then they, you know, left and did their own thing. It's amazing to see the No Boys Allowed program and how these women are hanging around an hour, hour and a half after the program because they've connected with someone while they're in mm -hmm. there that is going through the same thing that they're going through. I think 
So I would have to think that connecting with a support group and especially the specialized support group of women's only night out, you know, the, the no boys allowed or the boys having their boys night out, that specific kind of support, so tight, so being able to say what's on your heart. And for women especially, venting, mm -hmm. having a voice, not, it, my observation, women are stuffers. Would you, would you agree with that? You think they, they pant things down, they kind of stuff, they kind of suck. I, I think we do. I think the men with MS probably do it even more mm -hmm. because there aren't as many of them. Only 25% mm -hmm. of people with MS are men. So for them to have boys night out, that's a huge release for them to be able to admit some fallibility that, hey, I, I can't fix everything with mm -hmm. duct tape. Mm -hmm. I, I think the society has come to a place and it's, I mean, it's been around for how long now? Uh, we've been around here since 1949. Oh, so, so it's been serious time. Yeah. Well, you're, when you think about all the years it's been around, and I'm sure people that have been around forever have seen all the changes, not only in the society, but how we approach the, the, the MS. But what do you see in the future? What do you, so what, if you had to fantasize, and I, I know the obvious one is a cure, right? Yeah. We wouldn't need yeah. the MS yeah. society. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would but, be the fantasy. But until that day, what's your, what's your fantasy? What, what other services would you like to bring online? You know, it's, in my opinion, it's really about reaching more clients with MS. That's what I'd say is, mm -hmm. is you know, letting them know that we're here and letting them know what we're doing and um, letting them know how they can not only help themselves but help others in their community that have MS. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, when the society first started, uh, Sylvia Lowry, who was our founder, her brother was diagnosed and she literally had to place an ad in the paper saying, has anyone heard of this? Has anyone, you know, had this before? And so to go from that to now where, you know, like you said, you keep talking about Googling, you know, mm -hmm. and you can find all these different resources. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the, the strides that we've made with research in our programs are, are just amazing. So continuing on that path and um, creating a world free of MS. I'm thinking what that would have been like back then to have a run an ad in a paper and say, does anybody, has anybody heard of this? And I'd be interested to know what did we call it before it was MS? Mm -hmm. Because maybe it was looked, it looked upon as something else. Yeah. You know, and many of our disease, we, we're more quantifiable today than we were back in the 40s. So I'm, I, I think about all the uh, aspects of the society, everything being born, all these extracurricular activities that the society sponsors with their co their co partners, their corporate partners, and they sponsor for one reason, not only for the awareness, but our end game goal is to get a cure here. Right. And, and that, that's our that's our solitary focus. And I feel like in the meantime, it's really mobilizing these people with MS and in mm -hmm. our community, you know, getting them to, to join the movement and, um, you know, just help us continue the good work mm -hmm. that, that is being done in the community. We've been so blessed by those corporations that sponsor mm -hmm. us, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Scottsdale Insurance, um, we've mentioned GoDaddy, um, Brokers Alliance. Oh yeah, yeah. our Tire. sponsor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we we are blessed with a lot of support. And you know, it's support in so many different facets too. You know, I, I've wanted to say that the past couple days because I know you've been talking about people coming to the luncheon, and even if they can't come to the luncheon, but they they have an avenue where we can do something like Brokers Alliance is allowing us to do today: build awareness. You know, maybe they have an item they'd like to donate. Maybe they'd like, you know, they they have you know some other avenue for us. It, it doesn't always have to be monetary, even though we you know mm -hmm. mainly you know that's how we fund our research. Um, right. But like she said, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona, Scottsdale Insurance Company. GoDaddy, Discount Tire, these are all companies in our community that have stepped up year after year mm -hmm. and are helping us, um, you know, to create a world free of MS. If you had to think about the impact on the national scene, the National MS mm -hmm. Society, how much interwork or, or, you know, kind of communication do you have with the national group? Oh, we're very close with National, yeah, mm -hmm. as well as the other chapters. I mean, we work hand-in-hand hand with them to make sure that we're not recreating the wheel and that we're utilizing sponsors across the board. You know, for example, we have national teams, and those are teams that um, have, you know, different corporations that are involved with us on, on a complete, you know, national level. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's great to have those resources and, like I said, use mm -hmm. what we have to the best of our ability and be working with these other chapters and our national office as well. What does, what, what's the national's presence out on the street. I mean, as far as what, what are they doing that we can see 
on a daily basis? What do they do? Well, again, we, we are one of the leading funders in MS research, you mm -hmm. know, so we are, we're up there. We're um, doing a lot, you know, again, nationally and mm -hmm. even here locally. We've funded grants at the Mayo Clinic. We've funded grants at Barrow Neurological mm -hmm. Institute. You know, these are things that, that we're doing. So um, I think that national really has their, their hand on the pulse of the nation and, mm -hmm. and what our clients are looking to do and, and what they need from us and really help guide each of the chapters to let them know, you know, this is, this is someone else in your community that may be able to help. This is someone else that may bridge that relationship mm -hmm. and you know take those events to the next level and take those programs to the next level. So they're a mm -hmm. wonderful resource across well, the country. Fantastic. We're about ready to tie our, our segment and the end of the show. Susan, people are listening to this show. This is going to go out on the web. People with MS are going to hear this story. Give us a last parting encouragement. If you're living with MS, it's a scary time when you first hear, but don't be afraid because you've got so much support out there. The National MS Society is a great place to start. Make a plan. Get on a disease-modifying therapy, work with your doctor about exercise, and rally all your, all your people. Get your posse going and have that community of support because we're all here for you. That's fantastic. Susan, I want to thank you for your own personal thank story you. and your courage to just share it and on the microphone. And of course, we're just delighted to have the MS chapter here. We hope for the best. Have a great turnout April 28th at the Biltmore. Again, just call, well, you can call us. We'll forward on all that information to you. Or you can call the Society Direct, 1-800-344-4867, or hop out on their website at ArizonaMS.org. And remember, our corporate sponsor, again, I want to thank Brokers Alliance for giving us the ability to spend the entire week talking about MS and its in, the society's impact. And we want to encourage all of us. If you're sitting there and you're saying, boy, I want to get a part of this, just go ahead and call the local chapter. Go ahead and talk to uh, uh, Susan or talk to, <laughs> I'm freezing here, Brandy. You know, I keep thinking of the song. <laughs> 